Oxford play their very interesting technology to look at um, deep geothermal and the higher one. forwards and scaling, uh, one of the critical uh, things we need is heat. Um, so basically what Serafi is uh, really focusing on is the access of a quality of heat which is continuous all the time. Uh, as was mentioned with the previous speaker, our whole heat network sort of philosophy is primarily uh, driven from Eastern Europe and Scandinavia where we've been used to taking heat sources from fossil fuel um, supplies, waste heat from uh, power generation, from oil, from gas, from coal, etc, etc, and other sources of industry. Uh, obviously if we're decarbonising we can't carry on doing that, so we need another type of heat to do that. And, you know, conventionally we've been looking at growing source heat pumps, a very established business is growing, it's still being done, and we're going to continue to do that as part of the process, because not everywhere is suitable for, for um, uh, another type of solution. But in the, uh, also in the system we're working with, uh, we're also talking about conventional geothermal. Uh, conventional geothermal is not suitable everywhere, and obviously not everywhere is Iceland, not everywhere is Indonesia and places where you can drill deep into hot zones and aquifers and create um, thermal energy. Um, so although it can be done, it's not a scalable solution for everywhere. So having spent nearly 35 years in the oil and gas industry, uh, one thing that I've realised and recognised is that the deeper you go, the hotter it gets. Um, and generally oil and gas, when we drill deep, uh, heat becomes a problem because we spend a long time trying to cool down muds and various other things to keep the drilling deeper going, otherwise you have problems with uh, drilling. So what we've done is basically a, co a combination of taking that technology uh, into a step further for the ground source heat pumps and drilling to depths of around a thousand metres, 1500 metres, two kilometres, which is more or less the average temperatures that, or the average depths we need to get to to get to heat network temperatures, which is 40 to 60 degrees ideally to give us the temperatures we need for heating and for hot water. So they're the focus points for where we're trying to get to in this um, sort of say, next stage of revolution of heat network development. By doing that also, we then provide companies who are manufacturing heat pumps and energy storage systems and various other things a better quality of energy for them to actually use in the process, which reduces our coefficient of performance or increases the performance, reduces the energy supply they need to actually pump their systems or keep their systems moving forward. So it's, a, it's an added benefit for their systems to keep that going forward. It increases by depth, but only, but not only the, the temperature, it also increases the quality of energy. So when, if you look at a conventional ground source loop, we drill a well, we put a loop in it, we circulate fluids around a 40 millimetre, 50 millimetre tube, and that goes up to the surface. Our design is using a full system, what we call a coaxial design. So it's using a full bore of the well, fully cased. We flow down the outside of the well, we come back the inside of the well, and because it's running at a very low temperature uh, flow, so we're only flowing maybe a 1.2 litres a second in a fairly large borehole, the conduction is very quick. So the conduction actually goes right through very quick, and we get the full maximum benefit of that temperature at the bottom of the well back to the surface quickly. That increases the performance, it reduces the footprint, so the deeper you go, the less wells you need, so you can actually make projects work in environments where space is an issue. Um, I'll just come on to our next slide where we have a retrofit scenario of a hospital which was done recently, uh, originally looking at 64 boreholes down to 200 metres. Uh, our equivalent system is six boreholes of 1500 metres reducing the footprint of roughly around 2,500 square metres to less than 200 square metres. It also increases the quality of energy, but also reduces the cost of drilling significantly. People think that just by drilling deeper, it's going to cost more. 
but it's not the actual case because you redu you're reduce increasing the quality of energy, meaning you need less bulk, less meterage. Significantly less in this particular case by nearly half. Um, we also then we increase the temperature, meaning the heat pump coefficient is increased and the system economics work a lot better. We're able to get costs down on commercial scale products to as low as two cents or two pence per kilowatt um, hour from an energy point of view, which is very, very low in this case. To do this, we have to think a little bit differently. So we've been working with overseas manufacturers of uh, typical geotechnic type rigs to increase the weight on bit and increase the ability to drill deep wells uh, with the type of technology we would normally use in oil and gas, but actually apply to a civil engineering and more of a construction based uh, application. We don't want to include, include or induce oil and gas costs into this business because this is a utilities market. It's not an oil and gas business where you get a quicker return or a high return on investment. We've got to look at keeping costs down. So having spent a lot of while in the, in the drilling industry in, in oil and gas, we've been able to take some of the philosophies from oil and gas into some of the designs of these geotechnic rigs. This is one of the first rigs now going to be coming into the country to be able to drill down to two kilometres with a six inch hole at the bottom uh, and obviously the shallower you get, the bigger the hole in increases and you can get more energy. Um, these sort of rigs uh, will reduce the cost of drilling deep by order of magnitude. Um, a typical oil and gas rig drilling down to two kilometres, similar to what they're doing in Stoke and other things at the moment, you're talking 25,000, 30,000 a day for a rig. This rig is a, a beer fraction of that in cost of, of um, that type of application. So this is what we need to do to move forward to get into that deeper generation. Um, We've got a little video of a project that we've done, if we've got some sound, to make sure. 2023, Seraphi Energy was awarded a match-funded grant from the Net Zero Technology Centre, a UK government technology accelerator platform designed to support innovation and technology. The Seraphi well works through conduction. It takes heat that is present at the bottom of the well to the surface, where it is processed for its required energy use. The Seraphi well system uses a pipe of 2-inch high-density polyethylene, or HDPE, to increase integrity and allow the fitting of centralizers and other technical components. Over 160 12-metre sections were welded together on site by the Seraphi team, reaching a total depth of 2,000 metres and using a custom-designed scaffold and injector system. HDPE pipe usually has a low-temperature threshold, However, the Seraphi team has broken records in scaling the system to 2,000 metres and to the maximum desired operating temperature of 90 degrees Celsius. Once the desired depth of pipe installation is achieved, the workhead was installed and the interconnecting surface pipe was connected to the Seraphi True unit, another proprietary Seraphi design. The Seraphi True unit will operate for a number of weeks capturing real-time data used to further refine and adapt the performance of the Seraphi well system design. Seraphi has been working with industry experts to ensure accurate measurements of the data that's been collected by using their domain expertise, digital technologies, sensors, controls, fiber optic systems, and the analysis of the data in order to ensure that the production of geothermal heat is reliable, economic, predictable, and safe. So it's quiet here, all the tests are finished, you've got the results, you've got the data, what did you find? Well, we ran the test really for about four weeks, and uh, the first test we did for about a week was just to extrapolate and take as much heat as we could for a while to understand what temperatures and maximum temperatures we were getting. We had a 30 degree delta, so we were at 70 degrees at the bottom and getting just around 42 degrees at the top. And then the second and third week we ran the system